Hi everybody, little Scotty Moss here. Um, I'm going to talk about total anomalous pulmonary venous return today, which is probably the most complicated and hard to find uh, diseases in echo, at least in my opinion. Um, I'm going to try to draw this today in anatomical form rather than in echo form because it's a little easier to understand. So think that you're looking directly into the chest and that'll help because there's some weird stuff about to happen. So get ready for it, all right? All right, I did the best that I could. So this is a drawing where your right ventricle is here, left ventricle is here, and then mitral valve and tricuspid valve. Now, with the aorta here, you can't really see the pulmonary artery. Um, but what you do see a lot of times in these cases is the left atrium will be small for some reason. Uh, I can't tell you why other than there's no flow going to it, which would explain a lot, or very little flow going to it. There's also what's called partial anomalous pulmonary venous return, which is where there's some flow going to the left atrium, but it may only be two of the four veins. Remember, there are four veins that are reattached or attached to the left atrium. So um, once they attach, they dump the oxygenated blood into the left atrium and then the left ventricle sends it on its way. So, in this case, I'm trying to draw it, the dots are the pulmonary veins and how they attach. So you have lower and upper, and upper and lower, and um, what happens is they usually attach, you know, like maybe here and here, and then they come over and attach here and here, so that they're all attaching to the right atrium. Um, maybe a little higher, a little lower. I've just given you a drawing. So um, so this is what normal looks like, okay? So normally attaching into the right side of the heart, which means bringing oxygenated blood to the right side of the heart, which is necessary, right? That's how normal function, uh, normal anatomy works. It's going to pump out the, through the RV and through the pulmonary artery and you know, I'm sorry, they don't attach, I ah, just screwed the whole thing up, hold on. Went through that whole thing and realized I screwed it up, I'm sorry. Um, so let's go back to where I was and let's get this right this time. Anyhow, the pulmonary veins have oxygenated blood, right? Because they just came out of the lungs. So obviously, unfortunately I didn't say this, but they have to go to the left side of the heart to be pumped out to the entire body. So, my mistake, I apologize, I hope I didn't confuse you too bad, but the veins attach to the left atrium. Now, this is in normal anatomy. Now, we're kind of going over what we would call normal anatomy. Now, in abnormal normalities, which is what I had skipped to and I didn't realize it until I did it, um, the pulmonary veins will attach to somewhere in the right heart. Um, usually not the ventricle, but in the right atrium, they'll attach through a tube. They can attach through a tube that goes up like this, that is just, you know, formed from a, a, the atrial, you know, and all the veins connect to this, this tube. Sorry, this is terrible. Anyways, they connect to the tube, all four of them. And then they dump in, instead of, they dump all their flow into the right side of the heart. And then you get oxygenated blood going through the right side of the heart, which is kind of looping, you know. And the only thing that's saving this patient is um, an ASD. So you have a... A nice ASD here. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble getting the eraser to work. I 
it's not working, but we get an ASD going there. So an ASD, um, let's see, one more time. Nope, not working. I'm using the Apple Pencil for a change of pace, and it's not working very well. So if you have an ASD right here, then the blood is allowed to mix. So, you know, an ASD in the atrial septum, this is obviously the aorta, but below it would be an ASD, and that would allow blood to go into the left atrium. And then with that ASD and hopefully some sort of PDA, there would be some help. Um, getting blood to the left side of the heart. Uh, total anomalous pulmonary venous return has to be addressed right away. It's not something that can wait. These veins, it's so weird. I have seen pulmonary veins attach to the weirdest places. They can, they can all attach to the inferior vena cava from both sides. They'll just come in like this and attach to the inferior vena cava. Um, and you know, the, you're just like, what the heck is going on? I, I mean, was God taking a nap here when they built this baby? What is going on? So um, the, left, the left atrial veins, the pulmonary veins, can attach to any part, any part of the right side of the heart. And then the main thing becomes how much shunting is happening in that heart. So if the ASD is small and the PDA looks like it's gonna close, you need to give them some, what's called prostaglandins. I don't know if they're still using that. They used to use it all the time um, to keep the PDA open. And then if the ASD is small, you need to immediately open that up. So they might do that in the cath lab right away. And then the surgeon will review all the images. Now, years ago, the only thing we had to, uh, you know, evaluate an anomalous pulmonary venous return or a partial was echo. Now the choice for doing this is MRI. Um, this is a complex thing that involves a three-dimensional view of the heart. And an MRI can produce that a lot easier than an echo can. Um, it's just a better way of visualizing this disease, this typical cardiac defect. Um, I mean, one time, if, I mean, it, it was amazing in my opinion, but one time down here, let's say this line down here is the diaphragm. I had all the veins connecting through the diaphragm and down here. And there was four of them and they're all connecting down here. And there was so much turbulent flow here that I knew something was going on down there. So after looking at the left atrium a little more carefully and realizing it was small, and then seeing that turbulent flow, that's why it's important to bring your um, heart picture upwards so that you can see what's going on beneath the ventricles or below the ventricles. Because sometimes if you suspect something, you might get surprised and find out that it's just what's called a subdiaphragmatic pulmonary venous return, which is very unusual, but I've seen it. So if I've seen it, you can see it. So anyhow, this is a complex one. Um, it's very hard to draw. It's very hard to explain. The main thing you need to know is the left pulmonary veins, which come from both the left side of the heart and the right side of the heart through the pulmonary veins that usually attach to the left side of the heart. For some reason, they don't attach there, they attach to the right side of the heart. You just have to figure out where they're attaching. And the reason why they're using MRI now is because it's easier to spot where they're attaching. Then the surgeon doesn't go in blind because with echo, Unfortunately, a lot of times the surgeon would have to go in blind because they couldn't see all four of the veins. You know, there's just too much flow going on. And, you know, these, these veins, it's not always stenotic. It can be just regular veins. And that flow can easily be mistaken for tricuspid inflow or, you know, uh, just, you know, what looks like maybe some pulmonary flow. And, and they just get mixed up and you have trouble finding them. 
So an MRI is the way to go. And I'm not going to make this a long one because it's, it's just a better deal. Um, most kids, you know, they can sedate, put in the MRI machine, do this test, and uh, have an answer pretty quickly. And then it's up to the surgeon. The surgeon has to go in, uh, do some rerouting, replant the pulmonary veins into the correct area, into the left atrium, which sometimes can involve conduits, can involve, you know, a lot of different things. It just depends upon this kid, you know, and who and what's going on. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. That's long enough. I, I wish I had a better explanation for this and could draw it better for you. But the main thing that I can tell you is the pulmonary veins are going to attach somewhere in the right side of the heart. And you have to figure out where. And if you can, search up and down and all around and see if you can find the insert of the pulmonary vein. A lot of times the best view for this is the upside down, what we call a crab view, which, you know, is, um, is very, very uh, well known in the sense of echo if you're in peds. Whoops, sorry, I didn't have the pencil set up. So you, you end up with a view like this. And this view will show you all four pulmonary veins. This is from the suprasternal notch. So the suprasternal notch, you aim down. Um, you'll see some other vessels. I, sorry, I'm forgetting what they are right now because I've been out of the field for a couple years. But you'll see these pulmonary veins, and you'll see flow going down and into the left atrium. And what you want to do is normally you are going to identify four veins and show them all four. Um, usually you just need color flow. You don't need to really sample it unless you see one that looks stenotic. The color flow will show you that. So just image it that way and show them the veins. This is by far the hardest view to get in pediatric cardiology. So it's what they used to say separates the men from the boys, but that's kind of sexist. So from the girls to the women, whatever you want to say. But if you can get this view and identify four veins, then you don't have any problems with pulmonary return. It's working just fine. So if you suspect it, go to this view and see if you can see all four veins going into the left atrium. If you can't, or you don't see any, then you need to do some searching. And then they'll probably do an MRI on the kid and completely change your diagnosis. So anyhow, uh, wish you the best of luck with this one. It's tough, but you can do it. Good luck. We'll see you later. Bye.